everybody, this is Super BWB, and I'm going to be doing something a little bit different right now. Well, I don't know how I'm going to do this, so this is going to be a little bit of an improv right now. Nothing scripted. I'm just going to go go things off the top of my head the best that I can, and hopefully that you bear with me on it. And so if there's any stuttering, any mispronunciations, or whatever, I do deeply apologize. As this is the first time I've done something like this. Now what I'm going to be doing is my own little, it's a Yu-Gi-Oh thing. You know, I'm very into Yu-Gi-Oh. I mean, you should ask Kujo. He, he should know. And so, so yeah, it's a Yu-Gi-Oh thing. I'm going to be showing you, well, I won't be showing you all of it. Some of my collections, the cards that I have. Uh, my monster cards, uh, cards in my extra deck, like synchros, I don't have any fusions, I don't have any ritual monsters, as confusing as that is to me. And stuff, um, I'm going to reveal some very good strategies to catch your opponents off guard, if you don't know. If you don't know some strategies, I'm, I'm aware that some of you all do, but either way, I'm happy to share my, share my thoughts on it. Read the cards that I like to use and my feedback on it. Then, yeah. <laughs> and so, let us let us begin this little Yu-Gi-Oh expedition. Oh, okay. Well, first of all, there are, there are rules for the Yu-Gi-Oh game, which apparently they set after what the second season of the original Yu-Gi-Oh. Because in the first season, well, yeah, in the yeah, in the first, Jesus Christ, I can't talk today. Well, let me explain how the how the rules rules go. Well, first of all, there are, there are the cards. You can only have up to a total of I mean, four between the forty to sixty cards, and, and stuff like that. And I found out a little interesting tip the other day while I was just browsing through the little Yu-Gi-Oh starting manual booklet. In terms of you know how they have, um, I do think about 15 cards in your extra deck. That's kind of bullshit. I'm just, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, it's bullshit to me. I mean, the 40 to 60 cards that I can, that I can get, because when it's said in there, uh, if you have too, too many cards and you exceed the limit, you may not draw the cards that you, that you need in order to win. That, that, I can kind of see. I can understand that. Because I don't know how many cards I have in my original deck. <laughs> but I'm, it, it's probably over 60. I'm going to have to count them again. You know, that may take about 5-10 minutes. But either way, but more into the rules. First you have your draw phase, you know. You know, draw a card. And, and I, I never really did understand how the, how the standby phase goes. All it is, is a, um, there's a main phase. Two main phases. One is after the draw phase. Uh, what you do during the main phase is you can, you're able to summon summon a monster or um, you know set set a monster down face down defense mode. You can also use that opportunity to set down uh, any spell and traps that you're spell and trap zone. Duh. And uh, what was confusing the first time I played. Played it. It was. It has been a long time since I last played. It. I haven't play, played this game since since I was eight. So um, what you're gonna do do with it is you're gonna only summon one one monster per turn. But if that monster has a has a special ability that allows you to summon another monster, you can do that. Or in any case, if you don't have a monster that has that special ability, you can always resort to a magic card like double summon, and then you summon. One addition, one additional turn, and there's the, uh, the ultimate offering trap card, but that has to be face down first, because you know it's a trap card, and you can't play trap cards from your hand unless uh, it's, uh, unless it has that ability, which I don't recall any cards that you can use from your hand. <laughs> like as I was saying, like ultimate offering, you're gonna like have more additional sum additional summons, but at the cost of 500 life points. So Use that at your own risk. I'm not saying it's a good idea. I'm not saying it's a, it's a good idea. It's certainly not a bad one either. I'm just saying it's really that desperate. Well, I shouldn't use the word desperate, but still, it was part of the part of a strategic plot. Then, by all means, go for it. 
And so moving on to the main thing. Uh, <clears throat> as I was saying, with, mo with monster cards, you can uh, you can summon normal summon monsters that's levels like one one through four. I'm sorry, <laughs> I got a little bit distracted right now. I'm trying to I'm trying to find a card right here that has a specific example. Hmm, like this one, Pitch Black Werewolf. I don't know if you can see it. I'll hold it up to the camera. Pitch Black Werewolf. This is a level four monster. So I know also in this, I'm going to review my favorite cards that I like to use and its effect. So, so for example, I like using Pitch Black Werewolf. It's level four. Its attack is 1600. Its defense is 600. Now, what's uh, it's a beast beast warrior type monster, and the face is the face is always so freaking creepy. Oh, it's a mouth. Anyways, <laughs> anyways, what's unique about this card is its special ability, because each card has its own has its own effect. It is there's a regular effect when it's normal summon, or it, there are some cards that effect only ap activates when you flip it. Um, I think I don't think a normal summon is the same as a as a flip summon. But the card is already set first, so as the card is already set, you can flip summon it. But this card has its effect on its own, and it only activates when it's summoned to the field. And in this case, your opponent cannot activate trap cards during the battle phase. I don't know how many times I got screwed by this by my friend. <laughs> oh yeah, twice. It only happened twice. <laughs> so yeah, it's a level four. You can sum you can normal summon it. And as I said earlier, if you want to um spec and you want to summon more monsters, but you're unable to because of the rules. That's how the rules go. You might want to summon this guy, Riding Captain. Yeah. I know it's backwards, because that's how the camera is. And so, Mariah Captain is... Oh, I forgot. Pitch Black, Pitch Black Werewolf is a dark attributed monster. I forgot to point that out. And so, Mariah Captain is... I don't understand how he is Earth. It's an Earth attributed level 3 monster. Earth attributed level 3 warrior type monster. With, 12, with 1200 attack and 400 defense points. And his special ability is your opponent cannot target any other warrior type monsters for attacks except this one. And when this card is normal summon, you can spend a summon one level four or lower monster from your hand. Typically, I didn't have to read it from the card, but I, th I thought I thought I should anyway. So, as it's, as the card states, when you when you normal summon this card, you can special summon one level four or lower monster from your hand. Like. Elemental Hero Wild Heart. I like using this card too. He is an Earth attributed level 4 warrior type monster. And one additional effect, if you've seen Yu-Gi-Oh! GX, you will know what Wild Heart can do. And his effect is he is unaffected by trap cards. And so say if you if you special summon this and all of a sudden your uh, your opponent pulls like if if these are the only two cards on your field. Say you're in. Say your opponent pulls off a uh, torrential tribute on you. All you have to do is just discard. No, don't need to discard one card. No, you don't discard one card. All you gotta do, he just flips it, flips it over, reveals it in this trap, trap card zone. And as soon as you summon it, all all your face up monsters are destroyed. But riding captain, unfortunately, would have to go unless you have a tra another trap card face down on your field that counters in terms of tribute. If not, riding captain will go, but Wildheart stays because he is unaffected by trap cards. And I would like to introduce his twin if I can find him. I don't believe I have him on here. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, he is a. Well, I would say a twin. But another card that's unaffected by trap cards. I can't, I can't uh, recall, memorize the name. And so, and plus, the additional ability of Bariding Captain is Wildheart cannot be selected as an attack because he's a warrior type. You'll only have to attack Bariding Captain. And so, yeah. And so, another card that I like to use is none other than my, than this. Jigglypuff wannabe. Marshmallow! Yeah, look at him. He's so cute. I you just want to eat him up. So anyways, um, what the, this card has a unique, famous ability. 
lays face down in defense mode, and your opponent is desperate enough to, to attack it, which they probably do, to try to waken up your defense, all you have to do is just reveal it, and it's upside down, I know, and what's the ability? Once the ability is, once it's an attack and face, once it's, once it has been attacked in face down defense position, your opponent takes 1,000 points of damage. Just like that. <laughs> and also on a side note, I don't, this card cannot be destroyed by battle. But unfortunately, if it's an attack mode, battle damage is applied normally. And so, use like Wild Heart again. I'll use Wild Heart again, and. And your opponent has the ability to change all either one or all your all your monsters into attack position or fate or defense or whatever standard positions your your your, your monsters were once in. If this was in defense mode, it'd be forced, forced into attack mode, and Wildheart can attack it. It won't be destroyed by battle. But how much did Wildheart have? It's 1500, so you would take 1200, 1200 points of damage. But this won't, this won't go to the graveyard unless it's destroyed by a card effect. Another one that I like to use is Battle Fader. Now this may look like much because it has zero attack and defense points, but this only the only thing that I like to use is if I if I don't have any other spell track cards on the, on my side of the field, if I don't have any monsters and my opponent declares to attack, all I have to do is special I can special summon this card from my hand, instantly ending the battle phase. Now, if this card gets destroyed, either by a card effect or battle, it ha it's removed from play. That's the only, that's the only thing. Uh, let's see now. Another card that I like to use, <laughs> just Kuja is going to get a kick out of this, is Card Ejector. The only use this. Only use card ejector's ability like maybe once or twice. It looks like a little, little, little dark magician and dark magician girl's daughter. Well, card ejector is how the hell is it earth attributed? Card ejector is an earth <laughs> attribute, a level three spellcaster monster with 400 attack and defense points. And what it does is once per turn you can browse through your um your opponent's graveyard and remove from play one monster. One one monster, one card. You can just remove it from play, and that's the only unique thing about Card Trader. A card ejector, jeez. And here is Copycat. I love this card. What you can do is once you summon this card, a card to your field. If your opponent has either one monster or another monster that with the, and uh, you want to go for the strongest attack and defense points. Not particularly in that order. You could target one monster on your opponent's side of the field. Yeah. <laughs> one star on your opponent's side of the field, and it will copy its attack and defense points. Now, I think in the original Yu Gi Oh! we played Copycat. When Joey played Copycat, well, I'm not sure, but my memory is a little hazy about that one. Uh. Not that one is um, in the original Yu-Gi-Oh. I may be completely wrong because <laughs> I'm I'm having a hard time remembering it. But it was either this card or um, or Double Ganger. And that uh, it it copies Magic and Trap cards as well. I'm I'm pretty sure it's probably Double Ganger or, or something. I don't know. And so hurry up, try to hurry up and wrap and wrap this up. Um also wanna get into uh, get into tribute summoning and the tri yeah, tribute summoning and synchro summoning. Well, synchro summoning have to be have to be last. I don't know, I'd probably try to try to squeeze this in. I'm gonna get the Tribute summoning first, and see where that takes us. And so, for tribute summoning, that's and that's entirely a, a different ball game. Because in the original Yu-Gi-Oh, they didn't abide by the rules, and they could just summon level five and higher monsters just like that without giving it a second thought. That was bullshit. 
And so during the second season, during uh, when Kaiba held that tournament for the Egyptian God cards, that all changed completely. It started setting rules and shit. And so, for example, I I give you Power Giant. Look how sparkly it is. Can you can you can you guys see see it sparkle? That's bullcrap. I can see a sparkle. How come the camera can't? Well, Power Giant is level six Earth attributed rock type monster. Even though it looks like a freaking Lego. And so since it's level six, all you have to do is tribute one monster and send that to the graveyard and you get some of this. But Power Giant is different. You can, for it has a special ability. For that, you can special summon this card from your hand by sending one level four or lower, lower monster from your hand to the graveyard, as what I just did. And if you do, it decreases the, this card's level by the level of that monster. So, I don't think it's going to make much of a difference. If I have Battle Fader in my hand, all I got to do is send it to the graveyard. I got some of this, and this becomes a level 5. If this card attacks or its attack, or it's in the end, and which, if any effect damage you take becomes 0. That hardly happened to me. And so, as soon as I saw, as soon as I was summoned this card to the field, it, it, my friend would just pull some random bullshit effect, and this card is gone. Oh, and by the way, this has this only has 2,200 attack points. And... Also... Blue Eyes, White Dragon. Oh, yeah. I have that. Now, this is level 8, I think. Yep, this is level 8. And so, since this was level 8, well... <laughs> Well, for, well, first off, this is a light attributed level 8 dragon type monster with 3,000 attack points and 2,500 defense points. Now, that is badass. <laughs> and so, in order to summon Blue Eyes White Dragon, I don't know how many times I've got to keep flipping this back and forth. Okay, in order to summon Blue, Blue Eyes White Dragon, which is a level 8 monster, you had to tribute. You have to tribute two monsters, in order, in order to resolve that effect. Yep. And the same goes for the Red Eyes Black Dragon, which is a level seven monster, and this one is a. Is. Red Eyes Black Dragon is a dark attribute, a level 7 dragon type monster with 2400 attack points and 2000 defense points. It's a level 7, so you t you still need to you know, tribute two monsters in order to summon these two. Now, before before I, before I end part 1 of this Yu-Gi-Oh! extravaganza, I want to reveal other cards that I like to play play with before I end this up. Uh, where is it? Here it is. First off is these Dragon Brothers. The Light Pulsar Dragon and the Dark Flare Dragon. Now, with these two cards, these were the first two cards that I ever gotten. And I enjoy love having these cards. These these cards are my friends. Love having these cards. I love summon love how I, how I get the summoner without any tributes. All, I, all you have to do to tribute to some of these cards is to banish one light and one dark monster from your graveyard. Remove them from play and you can just summon these two from your hand. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's all there is to it. <laughs> and another one. Oh man, look how rare this is. Now, I don't really fully understand all of its effects, but the only thing that I can do to, su to summon this card is to, is to trade in two monsters with whose attack are more than 2,000 points. And right now, you guys should probably guess which card I'm talking about. If you guess the Galaxy Eyes Photon Dragon, you are correct. This thing is a light attributed level 8 
monster with 3,000 attack points and 2,500 defense points. And... Hmm, it's the same as the, as the, um... Blue Eyes, <clears throat> blue, blue Eyes White Dragon. I fully don't understand, fully don't understand its effects. It's something dealing with Xyz monsters. I never used this ability to fully understand it. So your guess is as good as mine. So I'm just gonna re so I'm just gonna read this from the from the uh, from the card real quick. You can special summon this card from your hand by attributing two monsters with two thousand more attack. During each player's battle step, when this card battles an opponent's monster, you can target the monster this card is battling. Banish both it and this card. If there are then any monster banished with this effect returns to the field and at the end of the battle phase. If the monster banished by this effect was an exceeds monster, this card gains 500 attack for each exceeds material and the exceeds monster had when it was banished. Hmm. That's very nice. Nice ability to know. And I think that's about I think that's about does, does it for me for right now. As far as uh how monsters go. Hmm. It seems like Amara Knight has an interesting ability as well. So let's see. When this face up attack position card is targeted for an attack, it changes to defense position. That's interesting. And completely screw somebody over and they only <laughs> if they're focusing more on the attack and trying to do battle damage to you. And so I think I'm gonna wrap this up, ladies and ladies and gentlemen. This has been part one of this Yu-Gi-Oh! Extravaganza. And so tune in for part two when I talk about the spell cards that I like to use and how they can be used to your advantage. And so see you guys then.